Oh, that's incredible. Wow, look at them. They're oh, gorgeous. Oh, they're so nice and sweet. Oh my God, this is so amazing. Hi folks, welcome back to Cookout. I'm Chef Marie Hines. I'm here with my climbing partner, Kate Rutherford. We're out here in beautiful Leavenworth and a part of experiencing the land of where we're at is actually eating the food that's grown from it. And now we're gonna make some dinner. All right, let's see what we got in the cooler, see what we're gonna make today. And we're ghosted of food. Okay, what do we do? Sad, sad, sad. Luckily, I have a little map called the Farm to Crag map. Farm to Crag is a little nonprofit that I co-founded with some really powerful women to inspire climbers to invest in local sustainable food wherever we climb. You know, this is a way not only to invest in your personal health and strength, but also in the communities we climb in. And then, you know, furthermore, it contributes in a positive way to our climate crisis. Awesome. I mean, what a beautiful way to round out our climbing trip, right? We're on this beautiful, beautiful earth and we have the privilege to be able to go out and move our bodies in it. So whether we're climbing or we're backpacking, just being a part of this land is really special. And I know for me, a lot of times, like when you're in these green spaces, there's a lot of agriculture in the area, but how to tap into them, like I've never really known how to do that. I'm an out of towner. And of course I want to support the local economy. Of course I want to support the local farmers, but how am I going to know that they even exist? So we're going to go on a little journey with Kate and we're going to go to this beautiful farm and we're going to get some produce and we're going to cook it together. Should we go do that? Let's do it. It's such a joyful way to engage with climate change yes. like, and your friends. All right, let's go get some food. Every part of my life, of all of our lives, food touches. I'm Chef Maria Hines, and on the show, we're going to explore how to make food taste mind-blowingly delicious, nutrition, celebrating the great outdoors, the impact that food has on the planet, our bodies, and our communities. We're gonna go on this journey together. We're gonna learn, we're gonna cook, and we're gonna have a lot of fun. Wow, these plants are beautiful. Look how healthy they are. Thank you so much for bringing me here. Hey, Chris. Well, hello. Meet my friend Maria. Hello, Maria. Hey, nice how's to meet you. How's it going? Very nice good. to meet you too. Awesome. This is incredible. Thank you. We're here at the Oh Yeah Farms for a little snack attack. Okay. Can you provide us with some veggies and knowledge about what you're up to? Totally. We'll fill your minds and your bellies. Yeah, Perfect. let's do it. Um, what do you have growing on the farm this season? Well, right now we have tomatoes. We're standing in tomatoes, but we try to grow A to Z vegetables on the farm, keep it diverse. Kale, collards, chard, garlic, cucumbers, potatoes, carrots, beets, uh, the list goes on. Yeah, so how do you know which one is ripe? Because I want to make sure I'm, I'm picking the right one. So the most deep red in this tomato, the indigo tomato, is on the bottom. So the deepest red on the bottom and these purple shouldered tops of the tomatoes indicate high levels of antioxidants, almost more oh, than a nice. blueberry by volume. Tomatoes, check. Let's go get some more stuff. Chris, this is beautiful. What are you growing out here? This is our brassicas patch where we have kale, collards, uh, purple cabbage, rainbow chard. We'll actually start with some kale. And so if you're harvesting kale, um, you can kind of see how these are set up like little palm trees. So the, all these little ledges here are, are broken off because if they were sitting here, they'd be little housing. Like it's kind of like housing development for pests and bugs. So we try to keep it really clean along the stock. So we, we don't break off in the middle because this is the new growth coming up. So I would just be, to make a bunch, taking off one plant. So if you take all the soil panels off, you're not gonna have uh, any energy uh, for photosynthesis. So if you take it down really low, there's gonna, it's gonna take a long time for it to recover. Whereas if you relieve you know, a little more of the bigger solar panels on, it's gonna recover and grow back faster for a quicker harvest. Awesome, yeah. that's great. You guys wanna get some rainbow chard now? Yeah, oh. that'd be amazing. Okay, cool, so we're gonna make us a nice bouquet like we would at the market. But yeah, we'll grab a couple different colors here. Yeah. This one's like hot pink. Can we yeah, bring a hot pink Yeah, we'll grab that one, one for sure. Any color you like that's Just amazing out to you. colors, yeah. So how do you know which, uh, which cabbage, to, cabbage to choose? So you're looking for cabbage, you're looking for nice tight heads. What you're doing with the cabbage is the whole thing's coming off. So I'm gonna cut that off and then basically I can peel this away. But if you're really cool, you hack it with your knife. And then you got this nice little cabbage. Oh, that is that gorgeous. Yeah? yeah. 
We're gonna get some more stuff from this farm and we're gonna make a beautiful bruschetta. Let's go. Look at all of this beautiful bounty that we just scored. Thank goodness to uh, Farm to Crag and your map. What do we got here? What are we gonna cook today? So much goodness. We've got some beautiful rainbow chard and we're gonna chop it up and saute it. Just sort of half steam, half saute. I like it, I like it. We've got all these amazing tomatoes that yeah. we collected. These are gorgeous, I could eat one now. Do it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're gonna make bruschetta? Mm. Oh my God, it's real good. Should we just eat them raw? No, mm. we're gonna yeah. make bruschetta, Beautiful. which involves mm -hmm. local, Lee harvested wheat from Oh Yeah Farms, and farmer Chris actually made us all this sourdough bread from the land. Really, Look at that. Really cool. He sells us at the farmer's market. And then I have a surprise chicken for us. Surprise chicken? From oh, far away, but. This is beautiful. Did you roast this chicken, Kate? It's I beautiful. I roasted a chicken for you. Oh my goodness. This garlic from my mom's oh. little garden and herbs. And oh, mom's got a garden too? Yep, she <sighs> grows onions. Y'all got green thumbs. Beans. Yeah, well, I mean, that was a big part of my farm to crag coming of age. I really, you know, grew up eating all this incredible food from my mom's garden or mm -hmm hunting and gathering in Alaska, or on these climbing expeditions really? where these incredible communities were feeding me. And there was a lot of days living out of the back of my pickup truck where I couldn't figure out how to eat like I did out of my mom's garden, hmm. how to eat like a local. And so it has always been this dream of mine to make a map so that we can all eat like locals wherever we adventure. So we have this really joyful way for everybody to to eat. And so it's sort of like the Yelp for farm stands and farmers markets and locally sourcing restaurants or breweries or bakeries. And, you know, we really curated it to be fun and engaging. So there's all the crags also on the map. So if you're in oh, Leavenworth fun. in Ice Cold Creek Canyon, you can search for that and it'll zoom you in to the 50 mile radius that showcases the farms that are right here, right in your little area. And so it's crucial to get all these really beautiful farms on the map. So, you know, we really want people to be contributing and um, have this be the sweet community curated map that um, really is a joyful way to, to combat climate change through healthy soils and healthy foods and healthy it. communities. By cooking with this and eating it, we're actually giving back. We're giving back to the local economy, we're giving back to the earth, and we're giving back to the nourishment of our bodies. It's really, it's a beautiful full, full circle thing. Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah. so I took the rainbow chard and chopped it up really fine. These are the little stems for the chard and they're really crunchy and bright and kind of like, it's almost like a, rose fragrance or something. So saute those for a couple seconds longer than you saute the greens. And then I like to put salt and pepper on top. Ooh, perfect. Super basic. So we'll cook these up and this beautiful bread. We're gonna make some bruschetta. So I'm going to take this beautiful house-made sour. He actually like, this is the wheat that he harvested from his farm and then he milled the flour and then he made the bread. Like how incredible is that? And now we get to eat it and we all get to try it. Um, but I'm gonna take the bread, I'm gonna get a little olive oil on there and I'm gonna throw it on the grill here, get it grilled up and a little salt, a little pepper and we'll just, we'll put all these little goodies. We'll put some tomatoes and some, some local goat cheese and all that stuff on there. And then for the chicken, I'll just make like a little cold chicken salad to go with the, the chard. How's that, is that cool? So I'm just waiting for the grill to heat up here. And as soon as the grill is nice and hot, then I'll get my bread on there. And just so you know, with the, with the grill, when you're doing something as delicate as, um, you know, grilling something like this, you wanna make sure that your grill is ripping hot and then you wanna make sure you oil it down. So it's already been oiled down because if you don't oil your grill down, this will stick and it's just too beautiful of a product. So everything that we do, we're just doing what we can to handle these ingredients in the best way that we possibly can. So we wanna treat everything as though it's just a little gift, as it is. 
One of the things that really inspires me about what you do on the farm is trying to have regenerative organic practices. And what are like the top five things that you do that really help like sequester carbon out of the atmosphere or retain water? It's basically keep crop diversity up, right? So we're not monocropping, we're growing multiple crops. Keep something growing on the soil, whether it be cover crop or some sort of food, right? Keep the green growth growing, so you're sequestering carbon by doing that. We gather manure from our Forest Service buddies right up the road from us and bring it to the farm compost pile and get that in there, so we're getting some animal agriculture involved. And then um, keeping root growth in the soil year round as best we can is a huge another principle. The fifth one would be minimizing soil disturbance, so reduced tillage. So our reduced tillage is very mindful. There's times where we won't even till using a rototiller. We'll plant with mechanized transplanters that run through the soil and plant our plants for us. And we'll just do that into very minimally disturbed soil. You know, these farmers have this knowledge of the land that nobody else knows. And so mm -hmm. it's so rad that you use that knowledge to feed us and then we all like our stronger bodies for it, you know. And Kate, do you notice like when you go to the grocery store and stuff these days, if you're in the produce aisle and you see melons, you can't even smell the melons because they were picked before they were actually ripe so they could get trucked over to us. But if you're a farmer's ma market, two stalls down, you can smell that beautiful fresh melon smell. And it's yeah. just, we're, we're, we're missing that and like reconnecting ourselves with that. Not only is just gonna make our eating experience better, but there's just so many more nutrients and vitamins and minerals and stuff in that food as well. And speaking of, like, check this out. Check out how fresh these carrots are. Like, first of all, look how beautiful that is. It's so beautiful and it's so clean. And I'm gonna tell you, a lot of people, they would peel this carrot, right? Cause that's what we've been taught. You need to peel these carrots. This is a beautiful organic carrot. You know what? If there's a little bit of dirt in there, we actually need that. We've become like way too sterile of a society. And what happens is you don't have all those like healthy little bugs and you know, that gut microbiome that we need to be able to kind of have like a nice, you know, biodiversity in our, in our gut system, which is going to help with our immune system. It's going to help with our mood. It's going to help like restore all of our energy. It's just going to give us everything that we need to remain vital. So we're going to leave that on there. Listen to the crunch on this. Look at that, that snap, it's amazing. So I was like yapping my trap. I do that, I get a little distracted while I'm cooking. And as you can see, like these are, are cooking up quite a bit. Can you open that bottle of rosé for me? Yeah. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna deglaze the pan so it doesn't stick too much. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of uh, wine in here. All right, now we're gonna put these greens in here. I'm gonna give a little stir. And this looks like it's gonna feed an army, right? But these greens cook down so low that, you know, this entire pile will all eventually fit into that. Yeah, check that out. Pot. It's already starting to wilt down, so. And you want them really wilty. All right, so we have these. These are wilted down. Kate, put some salt and pepper. I'm gonna put a squeeze of lemon juice. You wanna lengthen that finish and you wanna season in layers, so. I'm gonna kind of swirl this around a little bit. Before I take it out of the pan, I'll hit it again with the salt and make sure the seasoning is exactly where we want it. Now this is nice and hot. I can tell, I'm just like, you can see the, the steam coming off of it. I've oiled our beautiful sourdough bread right here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put these on here. And this is gonna be for a bruschetta. Oh, we have these beautiful tomatoes. So are we gonna salt? And pepper them? Yeah, that sounds great. Salt, pepper. There's some balsamic if you oh, yeah. want. Um, so check these out. These little nasturtiums here. I got these from my buddy's garden. She's out on a pack rafting trip right now. So I told her I was going to be in town, asked her if I could raid her garden. So have you had nasturtiums before? Yes. Oh, God, they're so nice and peppery, aren't they? Yeah. In, they're like uh, a bright little yeah. burst of flavor in mm -hmm. your mouth. Mm -hmm. So this, I'm just going to make like super simple. I have a little bit of balsamic vinegar put it in here. So that's going to be our nice little bit of acid. We'll put a little bit of pepper in here. Ooh, and the other day we were talking about sumac. So we'll put some sumac on there. Have you I had sumac, sumac before? Ah, oh, it's best. I feel like it kind of just like makes everything 
brighter and more savor. I don't know. Yeah. It's like no, it does. It does. Mystery. It's that that lemony. It has that lemony kind of like piquant, uh, citrusy quality to it. And that right there, you're right. That's what like it gives it that brightness. Yeah, I absolutely love it. So this just very, this is just like super simple. There's a little bit of sumac in here. Ooh, I think I'm gonna use some of these. We're just riffing here. We didn't have a, we, we honestly didn't have a plan. Right. We got basil, we have a little balsamic, we have some, you know, sumac in here. I'll put a little bit of olive oil in here so we just have like a little bit of fat. I put some salt, a little bit of pepper. So we got a little bit of, little bit of chicken salad there. And now with this, would you do me a favor? So now that this has been oiled and it's toasted, mm -hmm. if you take this garlic, this is the beautiful part about bruschetta, is now you rub the garlic into Ooh. the bread. We have our little, our little bruschetta. So we have the, the toast, olive oil, garlic is rubbed on there. This right here is beautiful goat cheese, um, Sunny Pine Farms. And here we go, we're just spreading it on here. And right now we're using the, the Honey Lavender Chev, which is amazing. And then Kate made these, this little beautiful tomato salad. I'm gonna put those on top. Look how colorful that is, that's wonderful. This took us like a half hour to put together. I mean, and we're just casually doing it and, you know, cooking and eating and we're outside and this is just another way to kind of show that you can have like really simple, fresh food and you can cook it whole, unprocessed right here. This isn't, this isn't, you know, camp food. We didn't open up a bag of dehydrated something or other and pour some water in it. Um, this is it. This is like fresh, beautiful, clean, healthy eating. This is so, so, so very, very important. And I feel like every time I step foot on a farm and I talk to my farmers and I have friends like Kate that bring me here and we're just doing this information sharing dialogue, it makes me realize that everything that I cook, it's precious. And it came from the precious earth and then it was grown by this precious man here, these amazing farmers. And so my job as a chef is to continue to like tell that story and make sure that I'm making the most beautiful thing that I can out of their food. And when you're working with food like this, all you need, a little salt, a little pepper. You don't need to put a bunch of stuff. You don't want to mask any of it. You want to show the pure simplicity of this beautiful, beautiful product. Farmer Chris, where are you? We made some delicious food for you. I'm um, just over here working on the tractor. Awesome. Come on in, <laughs> oh, have sweet. a seat. We harvest these from this really incredible farm. It's called Oh Yeah Farm. Have you heard of it before? Oh Yeah? Oh Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. There you go, my friend. Mm. Enjoy. Vino? Mm -hmm. Oh, and some vino. Whoa, this is, go. I can get used to this. Mmm, <laughs> well, that's a symphony of flavor right there. I love it, I love it. Your mm. bread is incredible. Well, it is. And those tomatoes are incredible. If you like what you're seeing, please hit the like and the subscribe. We're so happy to be cooking and hanging with you today. Give us some comments and feedback. And on that note, Farm to Crag, Kate, where do we find you? Yeah, come on over to farmtocrag.org slash map and join us. We've got the beta on local food. Nice. Perfect in every way. Mm.